I'm John DeArmond. And I'm Edward. And we're with the Coquille Valley Sword Group. And today we're going to be talking about Hasso Migi. Hasso Migi is the third kata in the Tachi Seho, the long sword work. It is uh, basically just a mirror of Hasso Hidari. Um, there are some little tricks with it, but by and large, it's very, very similar. So we're going to start off with a quick demonstration uh, with the safety pause, and then we'll break it down and we'll go through it. Again. So with Hasso Migi to the right, the beginning is pretty much the same, uh, except as you first come into Hasso, rather than just sliding your back foot up, you're going to let it take the front position. So you'll have left foot forward uh, so that your hips are basically towards that Migi position. We start with the foot that's in front, which is the left foot. One, two, three, right? And then we step off the line, Oof. into that hasso with, again, the left foot forward. For the cut, as Uchidachi retreats, we step in with the lead foot and we cut across our body. Other than that, it's just like the rest of the kata. Thrust, up to centralize, Kamayo Toku, on and on and on. The tricky part of this kata is that cross-bodied cut position, right? Cutting from the lead side, where your lead arm is forward and you have sort of your max range, is natural for us. But cutting across our body, where our range is so significantly uh, shorter, is, is hard and uncomfortable at first. Um, but there are some tricks to make it easier and some things to avoid. So, um, I'll be Shidachi. We'll go ahead and start up in Hasso. Ba, ba, ba. So, Eddie cuts at me, right? One. What I want to do here is I want to make sure that my Hasso position is good. Um, one of the errors that a lot of people have is they'll try and rush. They're not really in the pause version. They're not in the same time version of the kata. They're, they're in this weird, awkward between state, and they'll kind of be like, I'm gonna get you, right? And it, it really makes their life harder in the end. So pop up into Hasso, so you're nice and square to the dude, right? He cuts out to retreat. Now this cutout is across the front of your body, so be sure that you don't rush in right away because he's trying to fend off that space. We wanna catch him in the after, right? He clears, whoo -hoo 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 -hoo, and just as he is setting up into Hasso, that's about when I want to cut it. So his sword comes up and around. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. Shabadooks. Boom. Again. Lead foot steps forward. Hips shift into Koshimi Hanmi. Sword cuts straight into him. The... Next problem that people tend to really have, uh, pretty much universally with this, is they, as they're making this cut, they create a feeling of bringing their arm and their shoulder together as though they're, they're trying to squish it like a V. And this is not the case, right? The body is going forward and the sword are going forward. They progress out like rays. Huh. Huh. As opposed to <laughs> I can't even do it, right? <laughs> Squish, right? You don't want to get that. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to to warp it. The the area of your pec on the cutting hand side should feel soft and, and empty, right? If you're moving your shoulder inward, 
you'll feel that tightness in there. That's your first sign. Anytime you feel uh, tightness, difficulty moving your body, it is a sign that either one, if you have not been stretching and keeping up the basic maintenance of your body, which is not generally the case, or two, your, your technical work is wrong, right? Your tights and bucky is off and you need to figure out what you're doing and fix it, right? So, um, the, the no pause version is exactly the same, but we'll go ahead and show it to beef out this video a little bit because it's going to be short. <laughs> It'd be nice to have a short video. Here we go. So, butt up. We both pull left foot forward. I'm the bad guy. I start walking. One, two, three. You. Pajau. Good. So Eddie wants to make sure that he's in Koshimi Hanmi. Wants to relax his elbow a little bit. Oh, nice, soft, rip, right? So again, in the same time version, uh, you shouldn't do same time cutting katas with beginners, right? Because you can get injured. If you're sort of transitioning your student into them, what you can do here, um, especially if you've been doing sword work for a while, is break your posture slightly. Uh, not in the belly, but from the, the hip joint by letting the head come forward and the hips go back a little bit, sort of equal. So not all shoulder, not all butt, kind of 50-50. Doing this will keep your back straight, which is the habit that you want to instill in yourself, but it'll angle the trapezius, this uh, big triangle muscle on your, your neck and shoulder. Yeah, and it boop, gives a little fence, something meaty, for them to hit and you know the invigorating massage right and it just protects you a little bit um, until they get the the hang of it but don't make it a constant habit right cut ins it pushes i clear out he thrusts same way as normal nothing nothing fancy um, again just as with haso hidari there's no real specialized imbu form of it um it's more dramatized i guess yeah you can do that same center line cut here, but it's different slightly because rather than being here-ish, you're there-ish, right? So, yeah. So Eddie's gonna come straight on the line. He's playing the good guy. I'm playing the bad guy, right? Left foot's forward. One, two, three, yep. right? And he drops his shoulders. Pulls his forward foot into Koshimi Hami a little bit more. Bam, there we go. Now he's got his safety. Good. This Koshimi Hanmi position. Isn't very stretchy today. Bent knees, tucked tail. This sets you up for success in a number of ways. One, by lowering your center of weight as you're striking or as the, the precursor to striking generates this wave of uh, energy power from your body weight dropping that transfers into your swords. It's very uh, useful, especially when you're using the sword one-handed like we do so often. It also changes your relative relation to their body. If we end up grappling and he takes hold of me, dropping into Koshimi Hanmi significantly lowers my center of balance, making it much harder for him to do things like uh, nage, uh, throw me around right? While making it easier for me to do that kind of work. Or if leg work is in my toolbox, I can, I can start using that to disrupt his body motion as well from this low position. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to because you don't want to feel like it's a locked in place position. In other words, in the beginning, everyone's trying to get the position down. So what they do is they come in and they, and it's like, I live here now, right? Yeah, this, their thighs really tighten up. They really just lock into place. And they're like, huh, and then it's time to press. And they're like, crab walk. <laughs> and they have a hard time, right? What you're looking to do, hop, 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 is have this sort of slightly lowered position be easy for your thighs, right? And well, how do you do that, right? Do I just have to do 100 squats? It's not about the strength necessarily. Um, once you have the base strength, 
to just hold this position for, you know, five minutes. It, it's not hard. What it is, is a, you have to be consciously in control of your tension. In other words, most of the time, we create tension in our body without really thinking about it. It's not a conscious effort. We don't think, hmm, I'm stressed out. I'm going to just, right? It just happens without our thought. And like so many of the body's reflexes, it's not necessarily that great for us in our situation with our strategy. So we have to be mindful and go, okay, I stepped, but I'm light. I'm airy, I'm, I'm flippy, right? Soft, ba, ba, ba. So that I can move without uh, excess tension. Right. So that's pretty much it for Hasomigi. Um, like I said, real simple, real easy. So um, since the application is basically the same, what we're gonna do is we're going to spend the next video looking at Fukuro Shinai and diving into them a little bit more because it's an area that is not, there's not a lot of knowledge out there for people who aren't involved in Koryu, but it's a very powerful training tool that I think even uh, other, other martial arts could benefit from. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, as always, if you want to understand, gotta go pick up a sword and go train.